Horace Mann May 4, 1796, to August 2, 1859, was an American educational reformer and Whig politician dedicated to promoting public education. A central theme of his life was that, "...it is the law of our nature to desire happiness. This law is not local, but universal, not temporary, but eternal. It is not a law to be proved by exceptions, for it knows no exception." He served in the Massachusetts State Legislature 1827 in 1848, after public service as Secretary of the Massachusetts State Board of Education, Mann was elected to the United States House of Representatives 1848 From September 1852 to his death, he served as President of Antioch College. About Mann's intellectual progressivism, the historian Elwood P. Cubberly said, no one did more than he to establish in the minds of the American people the conception that education should be universal, non-sectarian, free, and that its aims should be social efficiency, civic virtue, and character, rather than mere learning or the advancement of education ends. Arguing that universal public education was the best way to turn unruly American children into disciplined, judicious Republican citizens, Mann won widespread approval from modernizers, especially in the Whig Party, for building public schools. Most states adopted a version of the system man established in Massachusetts, especially the program for normal schools to train professional teachers. Educational historians credit Horace Mann as father of the common school movement. Life Education. <laughs> 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 Horace Mann was born on May 4, 1796 in Franklin, Massachusetts. His father was a farmer without much money. From 10 years of age to 20, he had no more than six weeks schooling during any year, but he made use of the Franklin Public Library, the first public library in America. At the age of 20, he enrolled at Brown University and graduated in three years as valedictorian 1819. The theme of his oration was, The Progressive Character of the Human Race. He then studied law for a short time in Rentham, Massachusetts and was a tutor of Latin and Greek 1822 and a librarian 1821 at Brown University. During 1822, he also studied at Litchfield Law School and, in 1823, was admitted to the bar in Dedham, Massachusetts. He learned Greek and Latin from Samuel Barrett minister, who later became a famous Unitarian minister. Topic. Massachusetts Legislature Mann was elected to the legislature in 1827, and in that role was active in the interests of education, public charities, and laws for the suppression of intemperance and lotteries. He established the State Lunatic Asylum in Worcester, and in 1833 was chairman of its Board of Trustees. Mann continued to be returned to the legislature as representative from Dedham until his removal to Boston in 1833. While in the legislature he was a member and part of the time chairman of the Committee for the Revision of the State Statutes, and a large number of salutary provisions were incorporated into the Code at his suggestion. After their enactment he was appointed one of the editors of the work, and prepared its marginal notes and its references to judicial decisions. He was elected to the Massachusetts State Senate from Boston in 1835, and was its president in 1836 to 1837. As a member of the Senate, he spent time as the majority leader, and aimed his focus at infrastructure, funding the construction of railroads and canals. Topic: <laughs> Marriages. <laughs> 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 In 1830, Mann married Charlotte Messer, who was the daughter of the president of Brown University. She died two years later on August 1, 1832, and he never fully recovered from the intense grief and shock that accompanied her death. In 1843, he married Mary Tyler Peabody. Afterward, the couple accompanied Samuel Gridley Howe and Julia Ward Howe on a dual honeymoon to Europe. They then purchased a home in West Newton, M.A. at the corner of Chestnut and Highland Streets. Horace and Mary had three sons, Horace Mann Jr., George Coombe Mann, and Benjamin Pickman Mann. <inaudible> <inaudible> education reform 
It was not until he was appointed secretary in 1837 of the newly created Board of Education of Massachusetts the first such position in the United States that he began the work which was to place him in the foremost rank of American educators. Previously, he had not shown any special interest in education. He was encouraged to take the job only because it was a paid office position established by the legislature. He began as secretary of the board. On entering on his duties, he withdrew from all other professional or business engagements and from politics. This led him to become the most prominent national spokesman for that position. He held this position, and worked with a remarkable intensity, holding teachers' conventions, delivering numerous lectures and addresses, carrying on an extensive correspondence, and introducing numerous reforms. Mann traveled to every school in the state so he could physically examine each school ground. He planned and inaugurated the Massachusetts Normal School System in Lexington, which shortly thereafter moved to Framingham, Barr, which shortly thereafter moved to Westfield and Bridgewater, and began preparing a series of annual reports, which had a wide circulation and were considered as being among the best expositions, if, indeed, they are not the very best ones, of the practical benefits of a common school education both to the individual and to the state. By his advocacy of the disuse of corporal punishment in school discipline, he was involved in a controversy with some of the Boston teachers that resulted in the adoption of his views. In 1838, he founded and edited the Common School Journal. In this journal, Mann targeted the public school and its problems. His six main principles were, 1, the public should no longer remain ignorant, 2, that such education should be paid for, controlled, and sustained by an interested public, 3, that this education will be best provided in schools that embrace children from a variety of backgrounds, 4, that this education must be non-sectarian, 5, that this education must be taught using the tenets of a free society, and 6, that education should be provided by well-trained, professional teachers. Man worked for more and better equipped schoolhouses, longer school years until 16 years old, higher pay for teachers, and a wider curriculum, under the auspices of the board, but at his own expense, he went to Europe in 1843 to visit schools, especially in Prussia, and his seventh annual report, published after his return, embodied the results of his tour. Many editions of this report were printed, not only in Massachusetts but in other states, in some cases by private individuals and in others by legislatures. Several editions were issued in England. In 1852, he supported the decision to adopt the Prussian education system in Massachusetts. Shortly after Massachusetts adopted the Prussian system, the governor of New York set up the same method in 12 different New York schools on a trial basis. Mann hoped that by bringing all children of all classes together, they could have a common learning experience. This would also give an opportunity to the less fortunate to advance in the social scale and education would equalize the conditions of men. Moreover, it was viewed also as a road to social advancement by the early labor movement and as a goal of having common schools. Mann also suggested that by having schools it would help those students who did not have appropriate discipline in the home. Building a person's character was just as important as reading, writing and arithmetic. Instilling values such as obedience to authority, promptness in attendance, and organizing the time according to bell ringing helped students prepare for future employment. Mann faced some resistance from parents who did not want to give up the moral education to teachers and bureaucrats. The normal schools trained mostly women, giving them new career opportunities as teachers. The practical result of man's work was a revolution in the approach used in the common school system of Massachusetts, which in turn influenced the direction of other states. In carrying out his work, Mann met with bitter opposition by some Boston schoolmasters who strongly disapproved of his innovative pedagogical ideas, and by various religious sectarians, who contended against the exclusion of all sectarian instruction from the schools. Man is often called the father of American public education. Topic: <inaudible> Secular nature. As the old deluder Satan Act and other Massachusetts school laws attest, early education even under state control in Massachusetts had a clear religious intent. However, by the time of man's leadership in education, various developments including a vibrant populist Protestant faith and increased religious diversity fostered a secular school system with a religiously passive stance, while man affirmed that, "...our public schools are not theological seminaries," and that they were, "...debarred by law from inculcating the peculiar and distinctive doctrines of any one religious denomination amongst us." 
or all that is essential to religion or to salvation." He assured those who objected to this secular nature that, "...our system earnestly inculcates all Christian morals, it founds its morals on the basis of religion, it welcomes the religion of the Bible, and, in receiving the Bible, it allows it to do what it is allowed to do in no other system—to speak for itself." But here it stops, not because it claims to have compassed all truth, but because it disclaims to act as an umpire between hostile religious opinions." Mann stated that this position resulted in a near-universal use of the Bible in the schools of Massachusetts and that this served as an argument against the assertion by some that Christianity was excluded from his schools, or that they were anti-Christian. Mann also once stated that it may not be easy theoretically, to draw the line between those views of religious truth and of Christian faith which is common to all, and may, therefore, with propriety be inculcated in schools, and those which, being peculiar to individual sects, are therefore by law excluded, still it is believed that no practical difficulty occurs in the conduct of our schools in this regard." Rather than sanctioning a particular church as was often the norm in many states, the legislature proscribed books calculated to favor the tenets of any particular set of Christians. U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Congress In the spring of 1848 he was elected to the United States Congress as a Whig to fill the vacancy caused by the death of John Quincy Adams. His first speech in that role was in advocacy of its right and duty to exclude slavery from the territories, and in a letter in December of that year he said, I think the country is to experience serious times. Interference with slavery will excite civil commotion in the South. But it is best to interfere. Now is the time to see whether the Union is a rope of sand or a band of steel. Again he said, I consider no evil as great as slavery, and I would pass the Wilmot Proviso whether the South rebel or not." During the first session, he volunteered as counsel for Drayton and Sayers, who were indicted for stealing 76 slaves in the District of Columbia, and at the trial was engaged for 21 successive days in their defense. In 1850, he was engaged in a controversy with Daniel Webster in regard to the extension of slavery and the Fugitive Slave Law, calling Webster's support for the Compromise of 1850 a vile catastrophe," and comparing him to "...Lucifer descending from heaven." Mann was defeated by a single vote at the ensuing nominating convention by Webster supporters, but, on appealing to the people as an independent anti-slavery candidate, he was re-elected, serving from April 1848 until March 1853. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership of Antioch College and last years In September 1852, he was nominated for Governor of Massachusetts by the Free Soil Party, and the same day was chosen President of the newly established Antioch College at Yellow Springs, Ohio. Failing in the election for Governor, he accepted the presidency of the college, in which he continued until his death. There he taught economics, philosophy, and theology. He was popular with students and with lay audiences across the Midwest who attended his lectures promoting public schools. Mann also employed the first woman faculty member to be paid on an equal basis with her male colleagues, Rebecca Pennell, his niece. His commencement message to the class of 1859 was to "...be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity." Antioch College was founded by the Christian Connection which later withdrew its financial support causing the college to struggle for many years with meager financial resources due to sectarian infighting. Mann himself was charged with nonadherence to sectarianism because, previously a Congregationalist by upbringing, he joined the Unitarian Church. He collapsed shortly after the 1859 commencement and died that summer. Antioch historian Robert Straker wrote that Mann had been "...crucified by crusading sectarians." Ralph Waldo Emerson lamented, "...what seems the fatal waste of labor and life at Antioch?" Mann's wife, who wrote in anguish that the blood of martyrdom waters the spot," later disinterred his body from Yellow Springs. He is buried in the North Burial Ground in Providence, Rhode Island, next to his first wife, Charlotte Messer Mann. Charlotte Messer Mann was the daughter of Asa Messer, an early president of Brown University. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy 
Most historians treat man as the most important and beneficial leader of education reform in the antebellum period. He has many places, including schools, around the world that are named after him. Horace Mann Grade School St. Joseph, Missouri Horace Mann's statue stands in front of the Massachusetts State House along with that of Daniel Webster. At Antioch College a monument carries his quote, which has been recently adopted as the college motto, Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. The University of Northern Colorado named the gates to their campus in his dedication, a gift of the class of 1910. The Springfield, Illinois based Illinois Education Association Mutual Insurance Company was renamed in honor of Mann in 1950 as the Horace Mann Educators Corporation. There are a number of school buildings in the United States named after Mann, listed below as follows Horace Mann Elementary School in Hominy, Oklahoma Horace Mann Elementary School in Sioux Falls, South Dakota Horace Mann Elementary School in Newton, Massachusetts Horace Mann Middle School in Sheboygan, Wisconsin Horace Mann Elementary School in Bakersfield, California Horace Mann Elementary School in Glendale, California Horace Mann Elementary School in Woodward, Oklahoma Horace Mann Elementary School in Beverly Hills, California Horace Mann Elementary School in Huntington, Indiana Horace Mann Elementary School in Duncan, Oklahoma Horace Mann Elementary School in Binghamton, New York Horace Mann Elementary A School in Washington, D.C. Horace Mann Academy in Chicago, Illinois Horace Mann Elementary School in Indiana, Pennsylvania Horace Mann Elementary School in Iowa City, Iowa Horace Mann Elementary School in Ottumwa, Iowa Horace Mann Elementary now Lincoln K-8 School in Rochester, Minnesota Horace Mann Elementary School in St. Paul, Minnesota Horace Mann Elementary School in Sedalia, Missouri Horace Mann Elementary School, a National Register of Historic Places listing in St. Louis, Missouri Horace Mann Elementary School in Cherry Hill, New Jersey Horace Mann Middle School in Colorado Springs, Colorado Horace Mann Elementary School in North Bergen, New Jersey Horace Mann Elementary School in Fargo, North Dakota Horace Mann Elementary School in Dayton, Ohio Horace Mann Elementary School in Lakewood, Ohio Horace Mann Elementary School in Springfield, Ohio Horace Mann Elementary School in Ogden, Utah Horace Mann Elementary School in Redmond, Washington Horace Mann Elementary School in Nina, Wisconsin Horace Mann Junior High School in Los Angeles, California Mann Elementary School in Long Beach, California Horace Mann School in Amesbury, Massachusetts Horace Mann School in Salem, Massachusetts Horace Mann School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing in Alston, Massachusetts Horace Mann School, Bronx, New York Mann Arts and Science Magnet Middle School in Little Rock, Arkansas Horace Mann Middle School in Mann's Birthplace Franklin, Massachusetts Horace Mann Middle School in Abilene, Texas Horace Mann Middle School in Amarillo, TX Horace Mann Middle School in San Diego, California Horace Mann Middle School in Brandon, Florida Horace Mann Elementary School in Bayonne, New Jersey Horace Mann Elementary School in San Jose, California Northwest Missouri State University, in Maryville, Missouri, named their education building in honor of Horace Mann the Horace Mann Auditorium at Bridgewater State University in Bridgewater, Massachusetts The main building housing the President's Office along with student accounts located on the campus of Westfield State University in Westfield, Massachusetts A building of Teachers College, Columbia University is named for him. East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma, has a building named in his honor. Horace Mann Hall at Rhode Island College in Providence, Rhode Island is named in his honor. Mann Elementary School, Tacoma, Washington Horace Mann Elementary School, Redmond, Washington Horace Mann School, Seattle, Washington Horace Mann Elementary School, Oak Park, Illinois 
Horace Mann House at Brown University Mann's alma mater Pittsburgh State University, in Pittsburgh, Kansas, has a building named, Horace Mann School. It currently houses the Student Welcoming Center. In Massachusetts, public charter schools that are authorized by local school districts are known as Horace Mann Charters. <laughs> Emulation of the Prussian education system in the United States American educators were fascinated by German educational trends. In 1818, John Griscom gave a favorable report of Prussian education. Beginning in 1830, English translations were made of French philosopher Victor Cousin's work, Report on the State of Public Education in Prussia. Calvin E. Stowe, Henry Barnard, Horace Mann, George Bancroft and Joseph Cogswell all had a vigorous interest in German education. In 1843, Mann traveled to Germany to investigate how the educational process worked. Upon his return to the United States, he lobbied heavily to have the Prussian model adopted. Mann persuaded his fellow modernizers, especially those in the Whig Party, to legislate tax-supported elementary public education in their states. Indeed, most northern states adopted one version or another of the system he established in Massachusetts, especially the program for normal schools, to train professional teachers. In 1852, Mann was instrumental in the decision to adopt an Prussian-style education system in Massachusetts. Works A Few Thoughts for a Young Man, Boston, 1850 Slavery, Letters and Speeches, 1851 Powers and Duties of Woman 1853 Sermons 1861 Life and Complete Works of Horace Mann 2 vols Cambridge 1869 Thoughts Selected from the Writings of Horace Mann 1869 The Case for Public Schools Mann Horace The Life and Works of Horace Mann with introduction by his second wife Mary Peabody Mann